Hey everybody, Terry White here, Worldwide Design and Photography Evangelist, and it's my pleasure to show you quickly what's new in the March updates for both Lightroom Classic and Lightroom. Let's go ahead and start with Lightroom Classic. I've got Lightroom Classic open, and the one thing we keep hammering on with every release of Lightroom Classic is improved performance, and this release is no different. So what you should find, especially on Mac OS, is faster grid scrolling performance, faster performance, for example, if you wanted to compare multiple photos, so hitting the letter C and bringing up the compare view, so faster uh, loop view as well, so just quickly getting into the loop view and quickly getting back out, and it doesn't stop there. So for example, there's also faster batch editing, whether it's copy paste, whether it's auto sync, whatever it is you're doing for uh, quick develop, whatever it is you're doing for your uh, de developing of your photos is now faster. So for example, if I grab multiple photos, I hit the develop module, I hit the crop tool, and I wanna straighten these photos out, I just go ahead and grab my uh, angle tool, and let's go ahead and just straight, or straighten based on that horizon line. It straightened that one instantly, but it also straightened the other ones instantly as well. So quickly, quickly, quickly getting in and straightening multiple photos. Even though these are virtual copies of the same photo, it still straightened them all just as quickly. All right, so now let's go into another thing, and this is probably the biggest reason why you'll be happy with this update, especially if you're a Nikon user, uh, is that we have live view and tethering now both on Canon, which came out with Lightroom 10, the 10 update, and now it's in beta on Nikon, but we didn't want to hold it any longer. We wanted people to be able to start trying it out now. So I'm going to go ahead and switch over to um, my folder that I'm going to do this with. And in this folder, I've also got one image just to remind myself that I wanted to mention uh, that before we get into the live tether is that I'm in the develop module. This particular image was shot on my iPhone 12 Pro Max, and this is an Apple Pro Raw image. And Pro Raw has been supported since day one in Lightroom and Lightroom Classic, but what people told us is that this image that I'm looking at doesn't look as good as the one on the back of my camera. And I show this particular image when I did my camera raw video, um, and I have another image to show you in, in Lightroom. But anyway, um, this is because it's on Adobe Color, which tends to be very flat. Now if I switch it to the new Apple Pro Raw profile, which it will detect and usually switch to automatically, I, I, I did this manually, um, it will show you a before and after like this night and day. So that's the Pro Raw new profile that's now available in Lightroom Classic, Lightroom, Camera Raw, and on Lightroom Mobile on your phone and iPad. So again, just, uh, oh, let's switch back. Big, huge difference between uh, Adobe Color, and this is what people were complaining about. Hey, that image doesn't look as good as what I saw on my phone. Now it should look as good as what you saw on your phone. Okay, now back to the live tether. So right, to the next, right next to me, I've got my uh, Nikon D850 with a 70 to 200 millimeter lens. And I've got it, I'm just gonna go ahead and turn it on. And now that it's on, I'm gonna go up and do a tether like I always would. So I'll go up to my tether capture. I'll come down to start tether capture. And I've already got the name in. I'm gonna go ahead and start it with image one. And uh, I've got my uh, copyright metadata. I've got the location where the images are gonna go. I could also add them to a collection right now if I wanted to, and I do recommend doing that, but just for this test, I don't need to. Let's go ahead and click OK. And that will detect the camera and bring up the tether bar like it always does. But you'll notice a new button here for Nikon users, and it says Live. Now again, this is a beta. This is not finished yet, but you can start using it today. And unfortunately, in this beta, the Z series cameras are not supported just yet. So Z6, Z5, Z7, Z62, or Z, uh, Z, Z7, 2, those aren't supported just yet, but they're coming. All right, so with that said, uh, I could just do as I always do. I could uh, start shooting and the images will start popping up or I can click live and that will, I heard it click, that will activate the live view on my camera. And it's a separate window, the window can be resized. Uh, so it's pretty cool that you can do all that. Now, another thing you notice is I'm shooting in portrait mode and my image is tilted. And I was like, no, luckily there's a button to rotate the view so you can get it looking the way you want. All right, so now that I've got that in place, and it, see the important thing here, if I, didn't, if I didn't scale that properly, my part of my image would have been getting cut off. So I wanna make sure I can see the whole thing. 
All right, so now that I got that, I can either shoot with a camera shutter or I can shoot uh, right here on the control bar since usually that's the kind of thing you would want a live view for is because you're, you're, you're sitting in front of the computer while you're doing this. Now you'll notice down here I have my normal camera settings such as shutter speed, aperture, ISO, and white balance, but I also have the ability to auto focus. So if I wanted to change, the, you see how blurry that just got? I could change the focus right now, right on the camera uh, uh, from this tether bar. And I could, you know, I could either use auto focus, I could click auto focus and it will lock in, or I can go ahead and then uh, adjust, the, adjust the handles. So either way. So now that it's, uh, now it's there, I'll go ahead and take my first shot. And there it is. And I can go ahead and hit full screen and I can go ahead and check my focus to make sure it's good and it is good. And I can get out of full screen and I can go in and make any adjustments I want. So maybe I want it a little brighter. I can either lower my shutter speed, which is since I'm on a tripod, it's pretty easy to do that. I can go down to a 30th of a second. I don't have to hand hold it. It'll be just fine. Uh, that should probably take a you know, 30 second, 30th of a second longer to come in. Let's try it one more time. I noticed in the beta sometimes it doesn't pop in right away because it is a beta. There they go. Okay, so they're coming in. Just give it a second. They will pop in. But uh, that's why it's a beta. It's not finished yet. But anyway, I get to play with it, I get to see it, I get to see my live view, and I get to uh, experience it right here today with um, my Nikon cameras. And of course, if you're on Canon, uh, you have this feature, it's not a beta on Canon, it's ready to go. So I can change any settings, shoot tethered, shoot with live view, I can see my uh, position. So if I were to adjust the camera, let's say I, um, I zoom in a bit, I can zoom in a bit and see that right in the live view and know that that's the shot I'm going to get now. So it's really for composition and uh, just checking what you're gonna get um, while you're sitting in front of the computer to do it. So I, I'll crop that to get it better, but uh, that let me uh, check everything right off the bat. And those images are now captured in RAW and on my hard drive. All right, we'll take one more. That's the thing with product shots. You, know, you, you keep taking the same image, you're just gonna keep getting the same image. So if you don't make any adjustments, those two should be identical. All right, uh, let's go ahead and close the live view. Uh, that will turn off the live view on the camera. Uh, so if you did want to change anything on the camera, now you could. Uh, and also I can close the tether bar, which will turn off the tethering. And I would uh, recommend, of course, reaching over and turning off the camera so you're not draining the camera's battery, just sitting there doing nothing. All right, camera's off. Now let's go ahead and switch over to Lightroom. So Lightroom is, um, and there's, there's a bug beta there thing. All right, so Lightroom is uh, also updated. This is the, some people refer to it as the cloud version of Lightroom, but it's Lightroom versus Lightroom Classic. And same thing, so if I go into my edit, edit view, I've got the same ability with an Apple Pro Raw image to switch from Adobe Color. And again, when you bring these images in going forward, they will automatically switch to the Pro Raw profile. And again, it's a pretty stark difference between uh, Adobe Color and the profile we made specifically for Apple Pro Raw images. All right, next up, uh, if we go back to my home view here, um, we've added on the desktop in the Learn area. So Learn was always browsing tutorials, browsing people's before and afters, and you could look at your recently viewed. But on mobile, we had before you category. Now that's made its way to the desktop. So if I do for you, this is a curated collection of things that I might want to look at, tutorials and images I might want to look at based on the kinds of things I might have looked at in the past or worked on in the past. So pretty cool to have that curated selection um, now. So next up, let's go back to uh, let's go back to some images here. All right, and next thing I want to do is I want to show off um, one of the other capabilities, which I, I think is kind of cool. Let's go into edit. And you'll notice that this particular image has some edits applied to it. So it's got a slight exposure adjustment, contrast, highlights, so forth and so on. And now you'll notice to the upper right corner, a little eye on each of the panels here in Lightroom. And what this little eye is for, is for temporarily hiding 
the edits in that panel. So if I want to see, well, what did this image look like before these adjustments were made to it just in this one panel, I can hold it down and that shows me. So this is really helpful for people that are maybe like you, you start a slide, you're moving the sliders around and you're, you're like, am I making it better or worse? But I don't want to see a full before and after. I just want to see what I'm doing in this particular panel. So if I go down to color, for example, uh, same thing, I can um, go to the eye in front of color and that isn't making a huge difference. So that little vibrance adjustment I made is a very, very, very subtle difference. Uh, maybe if I crank it up more, okay, that's a very drastic difference. Now I could really see it and I could say, oh yeah, that's too much. I should probably undo and back off that vibrance or that vibrance or saturation, vibrance adjustment. All right, so uh, that's new. Also, you have your activity panel up here. I don't really have any activity right now, but if you click and open that panel, that will show you a combined view of all your likes, your comments, everything that in, in your shared galleries, everything that has come in from other people, you'll be able to see that now in one view instead of what was happening before is a pop-up notification every time someone clicked like or added a comment. Now you can just view it. Uh, similar to what you do in the Creative Cloud app, similar to what you do on Behance, you could see it all at once. And that's it. Those are the updates in the March update for both Lightroom and Lightroom Classic and Lightroom on mobile, especially iPhone, you got that new Apple Pro Raw profile that as you import images shot with the iPhone's camera into Lightroom, it'll automatically apply those pro, or that profile if the images were shot in RAW. So that's it. Hope you enjoy it. Go download these updates now. If you don't see them right away in your Creative Cloud app, click check for updates and they should be there and you can go ahead and start downloading. Cheers, everyone. We'll catch you in the next one.